Although interior designers do not need to be experts in the field of mechanical or plumbing systems, we do need to know how to read and understand these types of drawings in order to design spaces in a smart and functional way. On the NCIDQ exam, and more specifically the practicum, there's a chance that you'll encounter a plumbing plan. In this video, I'll walk you through the different elements of a plumbing plan and how to place walls and plumbing fixtures correctly. So stay tuned. What's up designers, my name is Kelsey. I'm an NCIDQ certified interior designer and the owner of KLSY, a Manhattan-based design studio specializing in commercial spaces. My mission is to help other designers excel in their career while promoting transparency about the industry itself. So without further ado, please step into my studio. Before we look at a plumbing plan, let's first review some basic vocabulary about this topic. The first is fixture. This may be self-explanatory, but a fixture is a piece of plumbing equipment like a toilet or sink. The exam may call these things fixtures instead of calling it a shower or a sink or a water closet as I discussed in my ADA restroom video. A trench is a literal trench, a hole that's dug into the ground and creates a pathway for plumbing pipes to be laid underneath a building. The water supply line is the main pipe that brings water to the building from the public water system. The drain is just like you think it is. It's the pipe where the water drains out of, um, like the drain of a shower or the drain from a toilet or a sink. The plumbing trap, also known as a pee trap, is designed to catch and hold a small quantity of water to provide a seal that prevents gases in the sewer system from entering the building, which can be very dangerous. And the plumbing vent, which is connected to plumbing traps and allows the built up sewage gases to escape somewhere. These are required in drainage systems. I would strongly encourage you to take all of these vocabulary words and write them down on flashcards because you also might see these vocabulary terms on the IDFX and IDPX multiple choice sections. Here's an example of a plumbing plan for a residential project. The trench is marked by these dotted lines, meaning that this is where the water supply enters from the main line and flows through, as well as where the waste feeds out of and exits the building. You may see the locations of the supply and waste lines noted on the plan, but don't pay too much attention to that unless there's a question on the NCIDQ exam that specifically asks you to locate those items. There is also an additional trench, which the exam may call an extra trench, marked by this hatched area here. When placing plumbing fixtures, all fixtures must be on a wall connected to a trench. The wall can be directly on the trench, or it can be perpendicular but crossing over the trench. It cannot be next to the trench where it doesn't touch or cross over the trench at all, and it cannot be a wall connected to a wall that's connected to a wall that's connected to a wall that's connected to a trench. The wall must be directly touching the trench. Plumbing pipes cannot go through doors. So if your fixture's on a wall connected to a trench, but there's a door or wall opening between the trench and the fixture, it does not work. As we discussed in the ADA restroom video, which I'll put a little card up here if you wanna watch that one next, Sinks are known as lavatories, so I'm gonna be referring to sinks as lavatories for this video just to keep everything consistent. Here's an example of a lavatory properly placed. The wall is located directly on top of the trench, so the plumbing can feed directly up that wall and to the lavatory. Note that the lavatory must be within 10 feet from the trench. Here's another correct example where the wall is perpendicular to the trench, but still crossing over it, which will allow the lavatory to receive water from the supply line. For washers, dryers, and dishwashers, you can also follow the same rule where they need to be on a wall connected to a trench and less than 10 feet away from the trench. If the fixtures are more than 10 feet from the trench, it would be too far for the water to travel. Another quick reminder that toilets will typically be referred to as water closets on the exam. Water closets, just like all fixtures, must be placed on a wall connected to a trench. However, the drain must be located directly above a trench or an extra trench. This is because there's a large amount of waste and water that's exiting the fixture all at once. Showers and bathtubs follow the same rule as water closets where they must be located on a wall connected to a trench with their drain being located 
directly on top of a trench. If you're looking for more NCIDQ test prep videos, then check out my NCIDQ video playlist here. And if you're thinking of taking the NCIDQ exam, then don't forget to click the link down below to be added to my NCIDQ study guide course waitlist and be the first to know when it launches. I'll see you next time for more educational interior design content. Thanks for watching and happy studying.